I know uh, recency bias is a thing, and you you, you kind of get caught up in it sometimes. I I genuinely believe that that fourth down play should go down as one of the great plays in Baltimore Ravens history. Now, it was a weird-ass game. And there was so much happening that it's almost like it occurred, and yet you have almost forgotten about it because so much happened since that point. But remember, two seconds before that play occurred, you thought the Ravens were about to have to line up like Hollywood Brown as a Wildcat quarterback <laughs> on fourth and five or try a 67-yard field goal, whatever the F it would have been, and that it was over. The season was over in that moment. And then running out like Willis Reed, if Willis Reed had diarrhea, here's Lamar Jackson to save the day with exactly what you would have thought, a bomb to Marquise Brown. A keeping his eyes up the field on a rollout where he could have gotten the first down. Should have probably run the ball in that situation. Should have gotten the first bo- down, but yeah. always looking downfield. Oh, God. It, it does feel nice to remember that they are still the Browns, doesn't it? It does feel nice. Can we? Oh, calm down. I'm, 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 I'm nervous. I, you oh, started stop. Too soon. You stop. started too soon. There you go. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Somebody. <laughs> anybody. Reacting live to the set thousand lateral play they're trying here. Maybe they'll get a safety. Oh, that would be neat. Oh, they've already covered, right? Oh, no. It got up to three and a half this morning, didn't it? Oh, they're going to get it. This will be one of the worst beats in football <laughs> history. <laughs> they got a safety. Imagine. <laughs> oh imagine. God. The it, worst bad beat ever. I, and I, I don't know if it did it stay at three and a half. I don't know. But it got up to three and a half right this morning, didn't it? Didn't it get up to three and a half this morning? It did. At some point, didn't? Oh they my give god! The, wait, didn't they give the safety? Well, there's no reason why they shouldn't have gotten it. It has to be. Yeah. Unless they caught it down. They might have. Maybe they said the ball was down at some point in the playing field. The play was dead. Oh, this is so dramatic. <laughs> there are so many people in the world. Oh, they gave it to him. All right. Hey. <laughs> Hi. From the, uh, I don't know what we're doing. This is oh, stupid. This is fun. From the uh, Chesapeake Employers <laughs> Insurance Studio Press Box. This is the Project Game Day postgame show after uh, uh, a hell of a football game. A, let's start there. I, I don't let's know. Let's start there. Yeah. That was a hell of a fun football game. I know as Ravens fans, we go back and forth. We do the the Twitter thing, and we complain during the game. That was a good football game. It was an epic football game. It was – that had – if you did not care about this game, if you're sitting in Albuquerque today, if you're sitting in Racine, wherever you might be, it's just the most enjoyable football game you could have ever possibly asked for on a Monday night. It was awesome. For those of us that have vested interest in it, I, I I need whatever they gave Lamar Jackson when he went back to the locker room. I need some Mylanta or something. I've been through a bit. Um, but that's just absolutely a phenomenal football game um, that was wildly entertaining from start to finish. What do you say? Well, clearly you say, all hail Justin Tucker, even in the moments. Like, there are moments... Where you're like, maybe he's not perfect anymore, oh, right? Okay. Like, he misses yeah. a field goal right, last week. Right. And, and like, you know, he, he has an extra point block. Not saying that's his fault in any way. But, like, you have these moments where, you're like, maybe he's not the greatest thing to have ever happen in the history of American sports. And then you need someone to deliver a 55-yard field goal with the game on the line. And, right, oh, yeah, we've got Justin Tucker here. That's pretty cool. It's neat to have that going on. I don't know what to say, man. I, uh, look, look, there. Uh, by the way, that's like, Ken Zalis. I'm yeah, Glenn yeah. Clark. I guess we Y'all, should do that. If you're if you're up with us, you yeah. know who we are. Yeah. Right? I mean, I mean, let's let's, let's talk Project like it Game is. Day post game show from the Chesapeake Employers Insurance Studio. Um, they won the game. They had to win the game. They won the game. They figured out a way. We can. We're gonna break things down. Um, you know, it, it f- blew another 14 point lead in the fourth quarter. Look, if look the, the, if you want to talk about the defense, I'm happy to talk about the defense with you. Like well, they're, I'm 100 percent happy to talk about. They they were injured again. I mean, the the, the 
you know, they lost Jimmy Smith again um, for a little while. You said that uh, Peters went out of the game. Yeah, I, I was not, actually, not long. Yeah, I was actually back. driving. Yeah. Is weird. To, the 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 lack of wrapping people up and tackling and always, you know, it, it, it's funny. We we celebrate this defense because. They're opportunistic, and they cause fumbles, and they cause those fumbles by going after the ball and big hits. But at the same time, there are times you just need to wrap up. Um, lack of a pass rush. Not not necessarily they, – they had some pressure, mm-hmm. but not getting quarterbacks on the ground. Well, and as the game went on, in the fourth quarter, there was very little even pressure. I sure, mean, it yes. was it was pretty – There was they were offering no resistance whatsoever. It, and it's it, – you know, even from Wink's – you know, Wink made – you know, they the Browns come out and they go down the field, make it look real easy. Wink makes an adjustment. But it seemed like the adjustment he made was to play bump and run man-to-man coverage mm-hmm. and, and, and to rush, you know, send an extra – person to create pressure and get the ball out of Baker's hand quick and they went away from that a little too much for me they played some zone they 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 like you know I, I guess you know you don't want to always do man but it, it just they played too much zone for me in the second half and maybe that was Jimmy Smith going out um you know some of that maybe they were getting tired uh you know as the game went on cuz they the time of possession in the third quarter especially was like 10 minutes to to five, I think mm-hmm. it was. I think it was doubled. Mm-hmm. So th- I'm sure there was some. 15. Well, and in fairness, part of that was Tyus Bowser getting the interception. Right, I understand. Like, right, they yeah. were back on the field mm-hmm. after a play, and it, it was just, it was just the way it kind of, kind of went. They really, the Ravens really didn't have the ball a lot in the second half. Um, you know, they had, if you want to count the one yard thing until right. the last two minutes, they had th- two possessions, and th- and that was it. Um, and Lamar is Lamar. I mean, I. Y- you love him or you hate him at this point. I mean, I don't think there's anywhere in between. I don't. I, I, I'm. I, is it still that? I don't I, think it's I that think, anymore. I, I, I do. But I guess I read the room in social media. It's like people are like, you can it. never win with him. Eventually, you have to throw the ball. It's like, but you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't have to. No. Um, in no world do you have right. to do that. I mean, it's like I think you know, that's a and different. He missed, and he missed some throws. I mean, the the one you would want the one. The Steed one, eh, okay, yeah, better, a little bit better. The definitely the one that Andrews wide open. You got to make that yep. throw. It's a touchdown. Which one are, is? What was the one where both Boykin and it was that the one you're referring to? The Andrews one where Boykin was also coming up. He was the on the outside. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. He was like, you could have thrown for either one of them as a touchdown. Yep. You, you got to make that throw, and I, I, I'm perfectly, you know, willing to admit that. There's no one like Lamar Jackson. You said it perfectly in the in at, at the halftime do this until he can't do it anymore i mean this thing this, we, this we thing for to the first half, but the it. first half of the season and and you know i was having a discussion at home tonight you know i i'm of the belief that somewhere early on lamar's quote knee injury was much worse than i think anybody would wanting to maybe admit. maybe, uh, maybe. Uh, that's just me yeah. talking out loud because this the last two weeks but what's what's weird is that this started before the knee injury. The thing where Lamar was was not running the same way, uh, yeah. it started before the the knee injury. Uh, it, it it did it did, but it just seemed like at some point you say, you know, what are we doing here? Oh, I mean, uh, I, that's, and it just went on too long. It's been insane. And and th- this is how you have to. And everybody keeps on saying, well, when you face good run teams, you're gonna have to throw the ball. What good run defense have we not run the ball? Has the Ravens not run the ball on? They trashed the Steelers on the ground. Here's a team that's given up less than four yards right. to carry over the last six weeks. They trashed them on the ground. And I don't want to just hear, well, you can't. You got to take Lamar out of it. Um, Gus Edwards and Dobbins did whatever they wanted tonight. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, I yeah, mean, like, I mean for it's the not going to be yep. every carry. Yep. I mean, yeah, there's going to yep. be some two-yard carries yep. in there. No, for but, the most part, they did, 100%. But, but the offensive line... Yeah, they struggled early. They they couldn't pass uh, defense. Well, stop making them pass. If they're not having a good night pass defense, stop passing the ball. Just run. You're running with your running backs at six yards a clip. And, and your quarterback's running the and ball. Your, and your quarterback extraordinarily well. Right. Look, I you know I, I I just it's it's weird because I think those are all relevant topics, and it feels like there's there it's it's worthless after a game like this to even have like I know, but it, I was just because like we're, there's we're, so much to unpack with the game. Correct. There's a ton to unpack, and 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 they have to. Well, I don't know what they're gonna do. My my gut would tell me 
that this that we've seen from the last for the last two weeks is much more of what we're going to see the rest of the way. That at some point you realize, okay, these other things we were doing for whatever reason, whether it was related to injury, whether it was related to them feeling some of the same stuff that outsiders are saying, right? Like we've got to throw the ball more, Lamar, whatever it is, whatever the reasons were that you were doing those things to start the season. Here you are. Your backs were up against the wall. You were a game over 500. Everything had gone the wrong way. This is who you're going to have to be. You've got one path to being relevant the rest of the way. Yep. And I can't guarantee that you will be. That, like When people say things like, at some point, you're going to be able to throw the ball more in order to beat somebody. Maybe. Maybe you will. Like I'm, I can't tell you you won't. And I can't tell you that they're going to be able to do it. But I know right now... They're, they're not good enough doing it for them to beat anybody that no. way. That's that's not – they can't win football games that way. They're not good enough. Nope. And that's – that's you can say who, – blame whoever blame you want. Blame whoever you want. I don't care who you want they're to blame not. for that. Right. You want to blame the banged-up offensive line. You want to blame the fact that they got rid of their tight end and then lost another one. You want to blame the fact they didn't go get any wide receivers. Mar- Mar- Marquise Brown can't catch the ball. Whatever you want to blame for. You want to blame, say that Lamar needs to throw the ball better? Sure, fine. Sure. All of those – throw it all in there together. But you can't change it now. It's no. week 14 of the NFL season. This is how you have to win football games. This is, this is by the way, it's a pretty good way. This is the part that people seem to struggle with a year ago. This notion that this is a bad way of doing it. It's a good way of doing it. It doesn't guarantee you'll win. It doesn't guarantee things will go your way. You might end up failing on fourth and one a couple times in a playoff game and have it all come sputtering apart. There's a million things that can happen between now and then. But this is a good way to win games. It plays to your strengths. You're good at doing it. You're good at doing it. And and here's the most important. You need to play some more defense. You do need to play more defense for that. Here's the the thing. Here's the thing. But you, you do... But you also keep your defense fresher by doing it. You know, you don't come out. There should be no situation right, when the game is not out of hand that they go pass, pass, pass. Never. Um, never. I mean, right? like no, I, never. I, 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 that's too. Never. No, you're, you're not. Glenn. Uh, uh, Glenn. I'm not when telling it, you. I'm, I, you're, you're, here, you're saying two different things. No. I'm not telling you I think they should. Okay. I'm saying that we're be- it's too mo- too monolithic for me to say okay. there should never be a scenario, right? Like I, I'm can't. saying, I'm saying in a one one score ten or first half type situation, you know, even down ten points early in the game, this team is infinitely better, even if it's third and manageable. I don't then then you know even there were times tonight, and we talked about it before. I, I couldn't stand as well as they were running the ball tonight. That they threw like in the second half three first downs in a row. It drove me I, batty. I, I, you're not going to get me to get worked up. about I know that. I'm not worked you're, up about you're it. Not, but you, it, it but drove, it's not even it, because of the result of the game. It, dro- it's, it it's, drove me batty. It's that when you run the ball a lot, you still are going to have to throw the ball sometimes, and we lose our minds until, the individual times they throw the until ball until they till somebody stops them from running the ball. I'm but, sorry. But again, you're still too monolithic, no, right? I'm like not. at some point, if they expect you to run the football, the idea would be that we okay. think we should be able to hit something throwing the ball. I, it's <laughs> this is football. Like I, we're, I, I we're, understand. I, I I I get what you're trying to say. I think when we say it in extreme ways, we're going too far. I think the Ravens did exactly what they were supposed to do tonight. They ran the ball a ton, including with their quarterback. They did. I I. I the, the nitpicking, like in this situation, could have been a run instead of a pass. You're not going to get me to join you in that. They did exactly what they were supposed to do tonight. They ran the ball they a did. boatload. They did. They ran the ball exactly as much as they needed to run the ball. Um, what are like five more times? Oh, for <laughs> from Josh Soroka. Strangest game of the year. Glad to be on top. Hey, KZ, how about that play call? Don't do this. We're Which not, play call? I don't know. I think he's just trying to. Uh, Which run. play call? I think I think he's just trying to say when something. Le, when Lamar, to when get... Lamar could have run for the first oh, down, but he Pete's kept his sake. eyes downfield and hit hit uh, hit Brown. It's great. Biggest That's play fantastic. Of the year. No question. It's... Biggest play of the year. Uh, Jeff Tucker just wow. Ravens covered. Yeah, I mean that's remarkable. Um, John Colson, could we please start without Ken complaining about something? <laughs> I was There's one way to get me to stop complaining, John. Wink. Oh. Ooh. Oh. 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 John runs the business here. It's, it's uh, almost midnight, John. Don't start with me. <laughs> Scott, I don't believe what I just saw. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah it, it, cool. I really don't think we should lose. I, I, I'm trying to think of like the iconic plays in Ravens regular season history right like in just regular season history the iconic plays 
The two runs against Dallas in 2008, the yep. back-to-back touchdown yep. runs, are yep. iconic plays in regular season regular history. Season. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not really an iconic play in the regular season from the 2012 season because the regular season was so effing pedestrian yeah. um, that like you, you couldn't have had an iconic play in that regular season. I'm trying to think of an iconic play from the 2000 regular season. I... I'm struggling with the I'm iconic sorry. the the um, the hell yeah coach let's go for it in Seattle last year is an iconic regular yeah. like, this to me should be an iconic play I mean I you know I I I'm trying to think of which of the plays in the snow game would be iconic I don't know man like I'm struggling uh, with what the iconic plays yeah, are in regular season I mean this is by the way, that just shows how spoiled we are. We, yeah. we don't compare it the same way because we have like meaningful game memories that matter more to us. Like When we think of the iconic plays in Ravens history, they're all from playoff games because the Ravens have been in so many of them. I mean, outside of the Seattle, go for the, it. The, the touchdown to Torrey Smith in Pittsburgh on the Sunday night after he had dropped the one just before that. That's an iconic play in Ravens regular season history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know we're coming up with a handful, and not yeah, not, not much I mean, more is, than a handful. Let's put it right? this way: this is top five. <laughs> uh, to me, it should. Be, it, and again, it, recency bias. I'm considering it should be one of the great plays in Ravens regular season history. It is, and of course, some of that goes to what happens next. If somehow they turn around well, and lose to the Jaguars or well, you know, whatever. But, like. but it's also, and I'll, I'll go back to conversations that we started this season with. This is a fantastic win, and none of this will matter a matter at all if they right. go zero and one in the playoffs again. Sure, and, we'll and look, it, but this it. was yep. the but it, right. It'll be forgotten about. That's why we would struggle with even this play. It's Correct. like oh, Correct. You know, but I, the next th- the next look the next three games. There's no excuse. They can't drop a game. I mean, well, they, I don't they, disagree with that. I mean, no, they absolutely throw, have to win out. Throw, no question. Throw, but not only do they have to, they should. They should throw their helmets out on the field and beat these. I mean, three you teams. can say whatever you want. The Giants' defense is better than you're. You're willing. They to are get. better. They are. They are. They're the offense, Giants have a really good defense. Okay, in fact, yes. they have a really good defense. Yes, and they. they yeah, and they have a terrible they, offense. They, I, they right. limited. Limited Arizona to twenty three points. I mean, like I'm not saying they can't they can't be touched upon. It helps when they do nothing their offensively. Offense, their offense right. Is garbage right. right. If they do now. nothing, which yeah. is what they did yesterday, they did nothing offensively, and that helped Arizona a little bit. And Look, then, I'm I'm not trying to tell you that I think that there's any world where the Giants should beat the Ravens. I'm just I don't, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not, less dismissive of them than I, I am I, the others and I'll, I'll on the agree list. With that because they at least have a good unit, whereas the other two teams that you're facing do nothing well. Um, our bottom teams in the NFL. M&T Bank is giving you the chance to show off your fandom and your Ravens swag and test your Ravens trivia knowledge in the M&T Bank Hunt for Purple Scavenger Hunt. Visit huntforpurple.com for the opportunity to win some awesome prizes. This week you can get in once per day in your uh, head-to-toe Ravens swag, so make sure you get to huntforpurple.com. Uh, AJ, Lamar had to go poop, and because of that we now have no backup quarterback. I mean... Do you really think it makes a difference whether Trace McSorley is the backup quarterback or whoever they're going to? I guess it would be Tyler Huntley, who's still on the roster. I mean this with all due respect. They, they, if Trace McSorley had had to stay in that game, they're doing nothing. I, I, I know that we're, he's this pop culture phenomenon oh, for some he, bizarre reason. Yeah. Trace McSorley's not an NFL quarterback. It's not thinking that it's a it's a big deal that Trace McSorley – look, I'm bummed for him. I don't want him to get hurt. I don't but. want him to get hurt, and and, and – in the situation where apparently he had no idea he was coming into the game because he wasn't warming up on the sideline, right. he actually played pretty well. I mean, Brown Brown needs to catch that ball and run 20 yards. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just – situation he was put in, I am not. I'm he's, sorely he's, it's just can not, play I'm quarterback not get, in I'm the not NFL. Getting, I'm not getting worked up about No, uh, me either. Uh, Trace McSorley getting hurt. Uh, again, bummer for him. Uh, John Proctor, it's really going to suck when Tucker retires. We are spoiled. I mean, it – I don't know what the comparison, the comparable is here because kicker is such a unique thing, right? Like, there's not really anything in sports that is similar to having, like, it's every other position you would say it's far more important. Like, it'd be saying, like, you have a great goalie in hockey. That's right. really important. Yeah. Um, or having a, a really good closer in baseball. Like, maybe that's a fair comparison, right? Like, it's like having the best closer for a really for, long yeah. time. 
and and never having to experience what everyone else in the league experiences, which is constant. Now, you know, there was one I mean, field goal kicking in, in the NFL this year outside of three guys is terrible. Correct. You're you're 100 percent. I think it's the best thing I, the best thing I compare it to. It's like what the Yankees probably felt when they lost Mariano Rivera. But can I say that here's the difference? OK. If I have the faith in one thing with the Ravens. It's finding good kickers. They're scattered among the right. NFL. Well, the guys, I mean, the guys that gave a shot to. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, right. like the they guys bring they... in guys. Like other teams look. Yes, who, I understand who, who, who the Ravens, who the Ravens come I under, in. I understand that. I There's understand. A, this, that. Uh, the, but in fairness, Ke- Kedvik's been on four teams they, but, and can't kick but, it all. But they also gave the, the shot to Billy Cundiff. Let's not pretend like uh, I understand that. But they. This guy's different. They, this since since Cundiff. Look at the guys that they have I brought in. Right. Like, you're going to say Will Lutz. You're going to say Robbie Gold. I understand. Well, Robbie Gold would have been, been brought in before. Well, Hashka was brought in. Those guys were before. I Cundiff, understand. But yes. they're they they they're, they're really good. As bad as they are with wide receiver For evaluation. Worth, they, they chose Cundiff over Hashka and Gano, who both did. ended up they being did. good kickers they, for some time. They now, did. Like, uh, again, again, again too, but I'm just saying, I, tru- I actually trust the Ravens in that one. I hear you. That's what happens when you have a special teams coach. Bill, absolute gut check. I don't know if he's talking about Tucker specifically. Or just the Ravens. It was Look, Ravens. This, you know, it was a the whole check night. for a team. No yeah. question. Uh, Scott Lamar is loved in Baltimore, but disrespected everywhere else. I'm glad to have him as my QB. I, I, I this is a weird thing. Like I don't think, I think you nitpick to find where Lamar is disrespected. I think there are people that have opinions that are silly, but that's why I couldn't get on board with love versus hate. I don't think there's a lot of. Lamar, I think you find a handful of idiots on Twitter who's like, "This guy sucks. He's right. just a running back." You do. I don't think that's an actual. I think there. Are I think c- when you see it from one person, you think that that's an opinion that exists or or something along those lines. It's I'm, not. I'm going to say there, are, and, and this goes to national guys. There are a couple of draft guys and a couple of national people mm-hmm. that don't, you know. Sort of like the the Herbert bit that you and I do, mm-hmm. uh, where right. they don't want to admit they're wrong about Lamar. I, I even that I think they like they don't they don't say I hate Lamar. They don't, or they don't say, but they, they do wanna, everything but try to give him. They don't want to give him any. They, credit they say something and, like yeah. this still appears to be unsustainable. Like right, I, I don't right. think it's love versus hate. I just think it's Maybe. like. There is not. It, there probably isn't the full amount of appreciation. Um, as to John Colson's point, he was literally the unanimous MVP last year. How is he possibly disrespected? That's. I think that's fair. Paul from Orlando. Uh, best part of the game being over is I don't have to hear Lewis Riddick hyping up the Browns anymore tonight. Lamar comes back to will the Ravens to victory, and Riddick is focused on. I don't, who cares what Lewis Riddick says? Can I, I, I can I just say one thing, Paul? Because I saw this all night. It was like. Stop. They're announcing are, the game. We are, we are so, we are so with this. sensitive. We are so obsessed. Can, it's not just Baltimore, by the I, way. It's, I know. That's, but, that's but, in every. But, but I understand it. It is everywhere. The Browns are better than we all want to admit in Baltimore. Can we say that? Of course they are. Okay. They're a good football team. Yes. Offensively, they're really dynamic. They got two really good running backs. Yeah, but they, you know what, Ken? I'm going to say the flip side of this. This, is, this should be embarrassing for them. Like it, honest to God, Cleveland. Yeah, if you're that team, oh, I, they, they, winning at home against a team that's been beat up and beleaguered and gone through, like this, really is sort of a. I agree. With, okay, I, you're I, you're I better, but you ain't at the big boy no, table. Not Let's not the, pretend like they are. They're not. They're not. But they they put. They're they're better. They're better. This is like last year. All the hype was all that they were hyped. They were awful last year. This is a good football team. This is a team that can beat other football teams. Sure. Um, it's a football team that in the playoffs, should they get – I mean, they're going to get there. You're not going to say, oh, well, you're just playing the Browns. They locked in this year. No, that, that you're going to have to play good football to beat the Cleveland Browns. But this uh, – to my and again, it doesn't matter because we're not doing radio in Cleveland, right? But right. if I'm doing radio in Cleveland, yes, my story is yes. th- this is it. This is what matters. You can't lose that the, game. Remember the way that you felt the day after the Ravens-Chiefs game, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. that's, that's how I'm feeling yes. today in Cleveland, yes. which is for everything that has gone well, for all of the things that we have been willing to praise and high-five about – the moment you got an actual gut check, the yes. moment you had to go prove it, what right. happened? Right. Now, it's not getting your asses handed to you like the, Ra- the Ravens did against the Chiefs. Correct. But it's the same old story. I, it is. It's the it is. They're going to be hammered. Can't get it done yeah. when it matters. Can't, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and that's, that's what I'd be dealing with if I, again, I, we don't have to worry about yes, that here. We don't. 
Uh, Patricia, Andrews is a beast, period. Really came up big uh, in mm -hmm. some situations, despite the fact that literally all of the attention should have been sent his way because he was the only real weapon the Ravens have. Um, uh, Patricia Lamar needs his own personal quarterbacks coach. He's got one He's of those. He's got one. I, I, what, what is it? What did is it because Lamar misses some throws? And I'm not trying to dismiss this. No, most quarterbacks miss some throws. They do. I don't know what we're obsessed with with critiquing Lamar. Do I want him to be a better all around passer? Yes. Do you know what I really want? I want him to be the dynamic one of one playmaker that he is. And tonight he was the dynamic one of one playmaker. He like when he makes an inexcusable throw, I'm I'm happy to beat him up. Most quarterbacks make some inexcusable throws. I I I want. To see better weapons, I, we always say this. I want to see better weapons. I want to see a more dynamic offense. As far as far as uh, some different things, I still, you know, again, as good as they they are on the ground, you know, they, you know, the one. I don't know why they never went to. It's funny. Uh, Lamar got upset with Harbs in the first half. He called a timeout. and They had the right play with the little uh, right a pitch. Right, they had a Duvernay. They, they had he was going to score. Yeah. They had it set up. There was nobody on that field, and they never went back to it. And it's like those are those are things as I'm watching the game that I get annoyed with sometimes because it's like, okay, you're doing this, you're doing this, that that worked, that worked. Let's bring him in motion. Do we have to give it to him? No, but but it's something now the I mean, Browns have to think about. It's just there, like, that's the that's it, the there's no evolution. Eventually, they have to evolve the offense a little bit more. You know, I, okay, or, or, they, or they can run for two hundred thirty-one. Well, yards they can, they like, can against but, a good run defense and win the football game. You gotta get guys. You gotta guys survive the fact that they had to play two possessions without their quarterback. They gotta they, like. They gotta I mean, get guys that can catch the ball. I mean, I, mean, I would start with that, right? I mean, like, I mean, I, look, uh, great. Brown caught the touchdown pass. You know, they could have. They could have. You know, you know, Lamar could have said, "I'm not throwing him the ball anymore." <laughs> um, there's no way in this situation. I have to get this first down, um, but. At the same time, you know, in the first half, Lamar was what three for six. All three were drops. Okay, uh, Brown drops the the pass while Lamar was out, right in his hands. Yeah, Would have sure. been a first down. Yep. Can't happen. The the consistency. You want him to throw the ball more. If you're you're one of those people, we got to throw the ball more. We'll get him better weapons, guys that can catch the ball. Or, or just don't. Or just stop but, saying dumb things for the sake of saying dumb things. They don't need to throw the ball more. I, look, I you they you don't. Know, you know what I? They mean. do not need to throw the I ball would more. Never throw the ball. The, the, well, that again, that's a different <laughs> conversation that we can have. Uh, speaking of which, somebody came back to that. Hang on a second. Oh. From. Um, Paul says, have to give props to J.K. for running over Headhunter Sunday on the two-point conversion. I thought that was – I thought the two-point conversion was Gus Edwards. No, that was, that was Dobbins. It was Dobbins? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, because we, yeah, right? we had that yeah, discussion. Yeah, we, <laughs> we did. We did. We did. We did. You're 100% right. Um, that was a Jamal Ray Rice type of gutsy run. Yeah, I mean it, – That's how he runs. Yeah, correct. He had a head full of steam. Had, I mean, it, it, yep. very rare. We, uh, Gus. Uh, Glenn and I were talking uh, after that play – and it was like well, when I saw rarely, the, con when I saw the contact right. coming, I started to have a bit of a <gasps> yeah. And then, but yeah. but he rarely goes down on first contact. Uh, him or Gus, you know, they both ran the ball really, really well. Um, you know, I, it, that's the formula right now. Those two guys, you know, ten carries a piece, something like that, averaging six, I seven yards. Go, 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 go. Proctor, Ken's right, though. Run the ball down people's throats until the defense I brings so many guys up that Lamar can hit anybody. What that They ran I, – I don't know if you guys saw. I know. They ran a lot. They ran the ball 36 times tonight. That's what that is. That's it, what that is. It is. It, again, I don't want to be critical because it was such a such a great win. By the way, somebody just texted me, what a, what a horrible band beat. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, it's an took, ungodly beat. the Browns at three and a half. It's just, an unthinkable, <laughs> like, like somebody, I, and I, I don't want to joke about it, somebody is going to make a life-altering decision poorly tonight. Oh my God. Like, th it's unthinkable that that would occur in that situation. That's why you shouldn't bet on football. But a reminder that if you're going to bet on football. <laughs> no, I, I, I agree we with we you. Don't, we have a betting yeah. sponsor, yeah. thankfully. By the way, Project Andy Post Game Show brought to you by Wise Markets. Go ahead. No, I look, I, I you know, there, it to me, it's just and it's nitpicking. But there's like, I want them to run the ball until somebody stops them. And when we talked about it. It's like, you know, you run, you you 
you run for six yards, you run for seven yards, and it's a first down. First down six, second down seven, and then first down we pass. No. See, I, in the end, no. and, and we'll never we'll never see. I they, know. We what, won't what, see you des- what you described to me is exactly what they did tonight. They ran the ball and 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 ran the ball. They did. And every now and then, they're going to throw the ball because I, I it's football, it. and you have to do that sometimes. Sometimes. But until they stop you. Like, like to me, until it was third and seven, I wouldn't be throwing. I, 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 uh, we'll do this. We can do I this know. for eternity. That's just me. Uh, uh, John Proctor does also point up the iconic regular season play we're forgetting about. Of course, the fourth and twenty nine in San Diego. Oh yes. yeah, well, yes, yes. one hundred percent. Oh my 100%. god, one hundred percent. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tom uh, T Bone. The safety was glorious. Uh, put the br- the camera on the Cleveland fans. Well, that was a cherry on a mob town Sunday. I I would I kind of stopped paying uh, yeah, attention. Yeah, we stopped. So I I mean, but I would have been drinking that in the same way. Oh, yes. Just the deliciousness yeah. of this was their Super Bowl. This was everything that mattered to them was winning this game against this team. All of a sudden, you're within one game of the division, right? Like you're thinking about Super Bowls. You're thinking crazy, and oh right, yep. still the Browns. Still the Browns. still the Browns. Uh, also, Richard brings up the um, the Shannon Sharp touchdown against the Jaguars in 2000 as an iconic Ravens play. It 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 should be, but remember, like that was so early in the season, yeah. and what the Ravens ended up being was so different than what they were that day. Like that day, they scored 39 points or whatever it was. They ended up being a team that scored like 39 points over three week stretch. Um, it's in the yeah. argument. It's in the it, argument. It's, there. it's in the argument uh, from that Jacksonville game in week. What was that, week two of that season? Sounds like an article uh, coming up. What's that? Sounds like an article coming up. Oh, that I go back and look over. Oh, yeah. damn it. Damn it, Ken. Sorry. Damn it. Not tonight. I know that no, much. Not tonight. It will not, not be tonight. But it will be soon. <laughs> uh, GC and KZ, what a game. My emotional up and down. This is from Troy. My, o- my emotions were up and down, and I thought we had done lost it. But, man, this Ravens team is tough as nails, man. So this is the one, like, intangible part of this that Kevin Harlan was talking to us about today. And I've heard from a couple people that – as, as insane as things have been this season, you get this one tonight, and knowing what the schedule is the mm-hmm. rest of the way, you build an amount of confidence potentially going into the playoffs and less pressure than you felt a year ago when you were 14-2 and two and the Super Bowl favorites and the whole deal that maybe you're in a better place to make a run. And I'm not trying to suggest the Ravens are ready to go knock off the Chiefs or something like that. Let me make that very clear. The Chiefs are the team. They're the team. They're the team. They're the team until somehow someone were to be able to beat them. But I hear the argument that things might just happen to shape up in a way that's favorable to you to feel pretty good going into a playoff game against, say, Pittsburgh in that first weekend or Buffalo in that first weekend. I, I is Buffalo four losses? They're four losses, right? Yeah, I believe so. So it's it's really hard to imagine it's anybody but Pittsburgh. Or no, or are they three losses? Unless Buffalo is Buffalo three losses? Are they I ten think, and three? I think they have three. Maybe they're ten and three. Yeah. And everybody else is four. Titans and Colts are four, right? Yeah. I'll remind myself of that. I there is I think there is something to that conversation. Not me telling you and also I would have to do the math on whether or not the Ravens can three. Could the Ravens um, still get the six seed too? I they guess, could. The they could. could. They, they could. Still get th- yeah. It. Because though, right now, because they didn't have enough AFC wins. Yeah. But it, with two more AFC wins, they they could, and the 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 who is it the Colts. The Colts, I think, still have one tough game. Although, let's all be very clear. You would far rather face the Steelers in the first weekend than the Bills. Right now, My yes. God, My God, would you rather yes, face you the would. Steelers than the Bills? You would. I I'll say this, and, and you talk about the pressure. I, I don't. I think there is an insane amount of pressure on this team to win a playoff game this year. I, I, I you know, it's really funny. Obviously, I felt that way in the beginning of the season. I still do. I think some of that dissipates because of how bizarre the season proved to be. I think it's hard to feel the same way. Look, I, I still think there should be. I still get the argument. Hey, you can't. How can you be one of the best franchises in football if you haven't won a playoff game since 2014? Like, I, I hear all of those things. But for this season, losing Ronnie Stanley, you know, going through the COVID outbreak, the whole deal, I don't know that, that the full amount of that weight can be put back on you three weeks from now, four weeks from I now. I think if you've be. won 
four games in a row, and you've been playing really, really well, and the Steelers are still be five at that point, five in yeah. a row, and the Steelers are still limping around and barely beating people, looking awful. You're going to go into that game with a lot of people saying. You know what? You you should win this game. I'm not. You know, um, there's there's certainly an amount of that. I don't some, disagree. I, with I I I I kind of look at this season as everybody's playing under the same rules, and everybody's had injuries, and everybody's had COVID issues. I mean, look, the Steelers haven't had had COVID issues, and they got bounced around two different times this year with schedules, and really didn't get a real buy the entire season, and all that. To, st- to be fair, no one did in the I, NFL. I, 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 Nobody was allowed to leave. Everybody had to go to work I, every day. I understand. Yeah. But I, I don't I don't want the excuse built it, in. It's not to me I'm it's, no, it's not an excuse. I'm talking simply about what, what what the feeling was a year ago was almost overwhelming, yes. right? Like you were it's the greatest team in, in franchise history. You better go win a Super Bowl. This is your chance. I don't think there's any world in which even winning five straight down the, the, the stretch this season can put that weight back on you. To, to win the Super Bowl, no. I, to, to go into the playoffs with just an ungodly feeling oh, of... It's, it won't be that kind of pressure. I, yeah. I agree with that. But but I think there is pressure. There's still pressure to win a playoff game because... I'm not saying there's no all pressure. The, all that involved in it, if they go into the playoffs... On a roll, five games in a row, and they're dominating people, and the offense is is clicking, and things like that. And they go in and face a Steeler team and lay another egg, and yeah, they I, do it in a, and they right, do I, it in a way that is at the end of the day they threw it thirty five times again. I, I hear you. There's going to be problems. I'm not debating okay. that. I'm saying that compa- comparable compare, to compare. what they did, what they yes, felt a year ago, not, there is not going to be that pressure. Correct. I agree and, with and you. And that's the only thing I can say. Okay. And I, by the way, I'd rather be that team. I'd rather be the team that has all the pressure yeah. because they were so good throughout the course of the regular season that the expectation is that you're going to make a run, right? right. Like, I'd rather be that right. team. Rather have that week off. And But right. I just yes, think it's an in interesting that, conversation. In that, in that type, yes. Right. Yes, I, I, will, I agree with that. Uh, from Papada, from Paul Joe, the yeah, the Joe Flacco to Tory Smith around Pittsburgh. Yet we brought that one yep. up. Oh, John, Col- yeah, man, I am gonna have. Damn it! Now I'm gonna have to do a stupid. We already do about that. it. Uh, John Colson brings up the Ray Lewis stop on the Chargers. Oh yeah, on, on the Chargers down. on fourth yes, down. That yeah. is definitely an iconic play. Yes, that is. regular season play that of Ravens history Darren that you Sproles. don't forget about. Um, stupid call. Great play, Daryl or Darrell. Uh, I think they disrespect Lamar Jackson's deep ball. He's talking about uh, whether or not there's dis- like disrespect. He really doesn't pass enough, and it makes people overanalyze every throw. Um, some truth to that. Yeah, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna hate. I, I, I'm sorry to say it. He's got to hit that throw. I mean, like Lamar's deep ball probably deserves an amount of disrespect. Yeah. Now, as I've said a million times, if you're a really good quarterback who just doesn't throw the greatest deep ball. I mean, I'm I'm gonna live with that. Tom Brady was never a great deep ball thrower in his career. It wasn't his strength. Not saying he never did it. It was never his strength. Joe Flacco was a phenomenal deep ball thrower, yep. and we think of him as an average quarterback, right? Like, I'll live with the idea that Lamar Jackson's weakness will be his deep ball yep. if he's really good at all these other things. <laughs> I'll live with that. And what I'd say is, if it's what's being disrespected, I don't think that's unfair. I think that. He like Lamar Jackson's not yeah. a great deep ball thrower. No. Now, yeah, sure, still give him better weapons, do the whole deal, yeah. right? But yeah. I think we can say that. I mean, I love, I love the the pass interference, fifty yards downfield tonight. Like, I mean, it's great. great. I mean, now, that that was a badly underthrown ball. It was, got, right? it was. It's probably, you know, I don't know if it's a pick or a touchdown because the safety was closing so quick, right? But it wasn't the greatest throw. But we see quarterbacks. Do that I, all the I, time. Look, there are absolutely circumstances where I'm in favor of throwing the bomb. That one is unique in that I don't even think it deserves credit for drawing the pass interference. It only got the pass interference because the ball was so badly underthrown yeah. that the defender had no idea where the ball might be. And, yeah. and he also he also had to throw it right there because he was about to get sacked. That's but, true too. That so, is true too. So he doesn't uh, throw it at that moment. He doesn't throw it at all. Uh John Casey, you're correct. The Browns are no longer the doormat in the AFC North. And what uh, what are the Ravens' options if McSorley is hurt? Uh, Tyler Huntley. Uh, Huntley. Tyler Huntley's on the roster. He can and he can throw. A lot of people thought coming out of training camp he that was he really good. Should have been the third yeah, quarterback yeah. on this team. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I mean, I'm not. I'm oh, not, I'm not. No. I mean, look. Whatever. If, we're talking if, about if, if, we're, if he has to play. Yeah. 
Whatever. Correct. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, it I feel no it's yeah. like every other backup quarterback or third string quarterback in the NFL. They all stink. I mean, they do. I mean, yes, I facts. Mean, I mean, that's why they're not starting. One hundred percent. Scott Lamar was hitting those passes last year. He'll just have to work on his mechanics for the real offseason in twenty twenty one. I, I don't know. I don't, okay. I don't even. That's know fine. What I mean, he hit a few more last year. Whatever. That's fine. Uh, George, how about Lamar going five for six for eighty two yards and a throwing touchdown after coming out of the locker room in the final two minutes? That was awesome. The first fifty eight minutes was all legs. Good to see the versatility at the end. Maybe he shouldn't warm up at all pregame. <laughs> just, just, just run out. <laughs> just run out of the locker room and let's go. No, because then they're going to want to throw the ball more, and I don't think they should do that. <laughs> let's, just, let's just go. It also helps George obviously if somebody catches the football. Yeah, it, is, it always it always makes uh, things go smoother when it somebody is, catches it is the football. Nice when someone catches the ball. All right, uh, got to grab a, a quick break for one minute. Tell you about our sponsors. We'll come back in, get you set up for Ravens Jaguars. A thriller coming up this Sunday. That's next. We're in the Chesapeake Employers Insurance Studio of Press Box. Late night edition of the Project Game Day post game show after the Ravens win 47 42 over the Cleveland Browns. Glory Days Grill Fall Winter Seasonal Menu is now available for dine in, dine out, on the patio, or to go. It's a new season, so enjoy new flavors. Try their new shrimp appetizers, homemade meatloaf, impossible cheesesteaks, and more. They're open from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. every Day. Visit glorydaysgrill.com for a location near you. From the Glory Days Grill family, stay healthy and positive during this challenging time in our community. Looking to get one up on the competition? Supercharge your computer skills. CCBC has classes at all levels from beginner to expert coder. Explore Microsoft Office, gaming, or even ethical hacker. Maybe hardware is your gig. Become A plus certified. All tuition free if you qualify. Call 443 840 4700 or visit ccbcmd.edu slash quickreg. With Wise Market's lowest price guarantee, we guarantee the lowest price in the area. If a local competitor advertises any of our tagged lowest price guarantee items at a lower price, we'll give you double the difference with purchase. Eat better, spend less, that's Wise. Calling all Ravens fans. Are you always casually rocking purple no matter what day of the week it is? Are you a Ravens trivia master? Well, at M&T Bank, we're big fans of the Ravens flock, and our purple pride runs deep. That's why we're giving you the chance to show off your Ravens flock fandom and test your Ravens trivia knowledge in the M&T Bank Hunt for Purple scavenger hunt. Make sure you don't miss out. Visit huntforpurple.com for the opportunity to win some awesome prizes. That's the M&T Bank Hunt for Purple scavenger hunt, huntforpurple.com. If you're looking to make an impact, there's no better place to do that than the U.S. Army. Whether your goal is to fight and cure deadly diseases, develop technologies, or seek adventures across the globe, the Army is where all of that can happen, and so much more. The Army is a team of a million individuals working together to take on the most complex problems in the nation and the world, and to win. Ask yourself, what's your warrior? Go to army.com slash Baltimore to find out. To learn more, contact your local Army recruiter and find us on social media at U.S. Army Baltimore. Ooh, hello. What happened to me? Where am I? Where is it? There. No? No. Here, you talk. You talk. Well, oh, now I hear something. Yeah. We're just, huh? You hear you. Well, but I couldn't hear anything a second ago. So uh, we were just talking about playoff scenarios and, and who plays who and d- does it matter if you're the two, three, or four seed. And I, look, you know, the Steelers have two losses, Bills have three, Tennessee has four along with the, the Indianapolis. So um, you, you have a situation where I believe it is Buffalo plays, did I say that? Buffalo plays Miami the last week, in week 17. And you want that game to mean something as far yeah. as seeding goes. And you are saying, and sort of rightfully so, there's no, like, you're not killing yourself for the for a bye. You're going to have to play in, anyway. In recent, in recent NFL history, coaches have seemingly, look, I would make the argument that you're better off trying to uh, you know, play another week without having to face Kansas City Correct. or something like that. Correct. Like, I would make that argument. Yes. Coaches have largely said, unless we're playing for a bye, And again, this year there's only one of those, and presumably Kansas City will have it locked up here pretty quickly. Unless we're playing for a bye, it's just not worth it to us, with the trade-off being the ability for us to bench our guys. 
Like, that just seems to be the case. So, we'll see. We'll see. Sam says uh, you guys should give McSorley credit on that last drive. His third down throw to Snead was tremendous. I, I, yes. I, I have yes. given, yes. I, again, I, I said all along, I don't think Ms. McSorley is an NFL quarterback, but what he did tonight in the situation he was put in into, I thought he handled himself really, really well. Uh, not on the first possession. Well, again, mm-hmm. he but, hit, he hit, if Brown catches the ball. Right, but then they have the one that they threw right. I, I get, like, I understand that one, but like, but on the third down, Brown catches the ball. I mean, it, it would yes, it would be nice if <laughs> if Marquise Brown would catch the football. I don't disagree with that. <laughs> um, look, the throw to Snead was tremendous. It was, it was a it was a Terrific. big play in a big spot. They and, needed they needed he, to stay on the football field. Snead caught the ball. Um, ultimately, ended up being the RPO was disastrous. Was uh, utterly disastrous. Utterly disastrous. Um, but they survived because Lamar Jackson played the role of superhero. And yes, unfortunately, that was the play that Nick Sorley seemed to get hurt on. Yes. All right, uh, Ravens Jaguars next week. By the way, we're winding down the Project Game Day post game show. It's also been brought to you by the U.S. Army. You you presume that it should be smooth sailing moving forward for the Baltimore Ravens. You would presume that. You would presume that. I will say this. Jacksonville, they can't stop the run at all. Mm-hmm. So you should just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. They also now, play, I've heard that from you somewhere before. You also have a Jacksonville team that has played close games most of the year. You know, they they've you know, they they don't they can run the ball as well. Um, they, they they have very rarely gotten blown out. Um, so it, I just, you know, they're going back to Gardner Minshew. They are week. going back to Gardner Minshew, which is really not that I you know care too much, but really weird that he was healthy enough to play and you didn't start him for Mike Glennon. Really, I mean, is that is that what we're doing? I, as I don't. A, I don't. As NFL coaches, yeah, I don't know. I mean, okay, good, good for you all. But uh, Ravens are thirteen and a half point early favorites in that game. Sounds okay. about right. They're sure. at home against a one in whatever team they are, one in twelve. Uh James Robinson, really good. I mean by the way. Yeah, it has been he's been pro- quite productive. DJ Chark's not a bad player. I mean, they're fine. Look, they you know, defense stinks. You, you gotta go show up. Like you, you, have you to gotta show go up. show up. You gotta show go up, play, run right? the ball, you're good. You gotta go show up. And then the, the other thing that I'll add to it as well is that I I don't it's important they don't get cute. Right, like it's important that they're willing to play boring football. It's yes. important that they're willing to say over the next three weeks, like we don't need to to suddenly say, "Hey, we're facing a terrible opponent. Let's chuck the ball around yes. and, let's, and, let's work and on go have some fun." Yeah, right, yeah, like let's, let's work just on just go do this. Go do this. Let's go win games. Perfect it. Be right. as good as you possibly can be at doing this. Rest everybody in the going third quarter. In, going into the postseason, yeah. and then Absolutely. let's see what happens. Yeah, let's don't get cute. I was really worried after the first play of the game. <laughs> I mean, understandably so. Like, like Under- is this is this is what this, we're doing? Is this a hard? Is, that, is, it, is this what is this yeah, the game right, plan? Right. We're we're trying trickeration. No, I hear first you. offensive play of the game. I hear you. <laughs> uh, that of course was an abort or a, a failed, failed uh, flea flicker. Flea flicker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Not uh, uh, read it. Read it. I had fun about uh, fun with that on on social media. All all good. All good, all man. Good. man. It all worked out. In the what end. a fun game! It was a wild, wild football game. Ravens win forty-seven, forty-two. KZ will be back Thursday morning for the Press Box Fantasy Football Show at 11.30 a.m. We will see you then. In the meantime, at Fans Fantasy on Twitter. Yes. Uh, I'm at Glenn Clark Radio. I'll be back Glenn Clark uh, Radio tomorrow morning. I believe Bradley Bozeman joins us right out of the shoot. I don't know if you heard. He had a big fumble recovery. He did have a big fumble recovery. I don't know if it was a fumble or not because they never Apparently bothered to show us a replay. But well, it was because they gave they, you the three correct, yards. Correct. Um, that was that was, it was a huge play. <laughs> ended up, if that was a fumble, that was really important that he covered it up. Uh, we'll talk to him about how wild this was, I, I believe, tomorrow morning. Uh, and then uh, Reed will be back on Sunday for Project Game Day. Thanks to the U.S. Army. Thanks to Wise Markets. Thanks to Chesapeake Pl- Employers Insurance. Uh, thanks to you guys for bringing coats out to loonies tonight. Warm my heart. Meant a lot. We'll be taking them to Helping Up Mission tomorrow. KZ, see you, pal. See you see Thursday. You. See you Thursday. Have a great night. It's been the Project Game Day postgame show.